Team Liquid's collapse is one we've seen many times from similar super teams, from the likes of KT Rolster in 2017, failing to make Worlds, to even going as far back as Alliance in 2014, failing to get out of groups at Worlds, to even Counter-Strike Go with FaZe Clan roster of 2017. All of these have failed to meet expectations, but the primary reason is because of fundamentals. Now, if you haven't heard of the story of Kobe Bryant by a guy named Alan Stein Jr., he basically describes that he went to check out Kobe Bryant when he was practicing uh, just his regular sessions, and he noticed that Kobe was doing the most basic movements in basketball, you know, lining up on the shot, lining up to take a regular shot, doing a jumper, etc. And it was all very simplistic and plain. And so he asked him why he ended up taking all of these basic drills. And Kobe Bryant responded with, well, why do you think I'm the best? Practicing the fundamentals, it's not meant to be sexy. From getting your recall timers down to understanding proper support and ADC spacing and lane to proper ward setup for objectives. It's these things that often super teams fail at because they assume their teammates understand these concepts. Everyone has their own little personal nuanced idea of what fundamentals actually are. And so therefore, super teams usually skip this step of getting on the same page as their teammates and everyone else. And so therefore, you all basically aren't on the same page. And so you don't get to understand the fundamentals and how everyone works together. This is, I think, the reason why Team Liquid failed this year, not because they couldn't lane or had trouble CSing. We're not talking about that super basic stuff, but the other more complex things, but still I would consider basic things, like I said, ward setup, support, ADC dynamics, objective control, lane assignments, and the mid game. If you start to make these faulty assumptions to begin with, it can sometimes take weeks to undo that type of mentality and it's already set in stone as it were if you just make these assumptions. Then you have communication. I always say you want to know the most efficient way to run a government. It's actually a dictatorship or a monarchy, right? They're just two sides of the same coin. The fastest way to make a decree as a law is from the top down, right? It's a top down system. A king could make a law in 24 hours, right? A democracy takes months, if not years, to create laws. So when you have so many strong voices in the same team, you get paralysis, right? And that's exactly what Team Liquid had in their entire mid game, I think, is it was in a inability to decide because everyone had their piece to add or say. And as we know, in League of Legends, your circumstances changes by the second. So if it takes for you to make a call in 30 seconds, even a mere 30 seconds, the entire situation and dynamic of the game can change within that 30 seconds. So that means that the call that you guys were debating before as a democratic situation is now defunct and it is actually the wrong call because now it takes you so long to arrive to that conclusion that the information that you were using beforehand is actually just utterly useless at this point, right? That's the same circumstances of, say, like a barren scenario, for instance, right? So <clears throat> an inability to decide because everyone had their piece to say or add is what is wrong with that kind of system, right? A refusal to accept the judgment from a teammate because you have years of knowledge that might differ, that's why High was such a great shot caller, right? Cloud9 played without hesitation because they had one source of authority. Now, many say that sure, it worked in High's day, but League of Legends has evolved so much that you can't have that quote unquote shot calling system. It just doesn't work like it used to. Oh, so you're telling me that team fights have fundamentally changed? that front to back has changed, that flanks have changed. 
those largely haven't deviated from their primary principles. I think every team needs a leader, and with super teams, there is no clear leader. Last is the problem of personality management. Now, this is, I think, the most underrated thing when constructing a roster because everyone thinks that you need unlimited firepower, right? That, you know, you need to have sick laning, like sick fragging, godlike mechanics are all that you need when building a team. A super team is essentially what a fan would create if they had control of unlimited resources, right? This is like the theory of if Reddit could construct a team and have an unlimited budget. The problem is, is you have to manage what are typically massive egos in a super team, right? Because superstars are victims of their own success. They're used to being the focal point of the individual teams that they came from. This is why I think glue players are so important, that role players are vital to the construction of a roster. I actually made a video talking about glue players and why they're so important. So if you want to hear more about the nuances of that topic, uh, go check out that video. I'll put it up in the, the box or whatever. Uh, but essentially, glue players allow for better conflict resolution and also someone who doesn't need all the resources, right? It's just someone that can kind of take a backseat and say, okay, you got a game plan. Let's do that. I got you back, bro. Now, in the case of Team Liquid, I think the main criticism of this team from day one was that they had too many passive and sacrificial players, from Bjergsen to Santorin to even Bwipo saying that he'll play anything to help his team out, to even Core JJ to some extent sacrificing his own lane to go make a roam and to go make a play elsewhere on the map. All of them kind of gave up a lot to make their teammates flourish when you look at the teams that they were in beforehand. You look at all their careers and essentially what did they do almost every time? They patched the holes of their teams, right? Bjergsen constantly patching the ship of TSM, playing things like Zillion and, and whatnot in order to make his team function. Santorin playing the indentured servant role, right? You had Whippo and Fnatic constantly, you know, making sure that his ADC and mid laner could function towards the late game by picking up the early game. You had Core JJ roaming and sacrificing his own game to help his teammates. Yes, all of these players are great individually, but once you put their personalities and gameplay styles together, they just don't fit even on paper. Super teams are sort of a oxymoron because while they're typically players that are seemingly good at everything, that makes them good at nothing because they have no direction, no focus. Even Bwipo had said that the team lacked focus in spring. And yet, that was also still apparent in Summer Split. With a lack of reminders for the fundamentals, which I think is mostly the problem with super teams, is that there isn't someone on the team that reminds them, hey, maybe we should do this. This is the basic move. Let's not try and get too fancy. Something which I think the, the coaching staff should primarily focus and direct their players on super teams like Vitality or Team Liquid to personality construction and therefore communication distribution, I think it's easy to see why super teams rarely, if ever, work. And until GMs realize that it's but a pipe dream and that the key to team management is fundamentals and personality construction and management, we'll keep seeing these super teams fail.